This program brought to you by Local Liquor. Local Liquor, there's one near you. Shoot down to the local. This program brought to you by Local Liquor. Local Liquor, there's one near you. Shoot down to the local. Tonight, in or out, will McGrath be the secret to rolling England or being rolled? And dropped again! The hallowed turf at Old Trafford, the perfect place to edge ahead. Hello everyone, I'm Lee Diffie. Welcome to Sports Tonight. The latest from the third test coming up, plus a tense time at the Bulldogs. A must-win game tomorrow night. Oh yeah, it's, uh, you know this this week's uh, is is really important for for a confidence point of view, if, if nothing else. Losing is not an option against Parramatta. Do the basics well and need to be on in defence for 80 minutes because they got some quality players. Parramatta's fastest family member. And do the Eels have the NRL's sexiest man? No, no, I don't. If I said yes, I'd look like a dickhead, wouldn't I? <laughs> AFL first up and Port Adelaide has failed in its bid to have Ford Byron Pickett's two-game suspension for rough conduct overturned. It's been an interesting night at the appeals board and Ian Cohen was there. And it seems we're having a little trouble getting in touch with Ian. We will return to him and he has some inter uh, interesting information for us. But let's move on. And Bulldogs coach Steve Folkes has joined Roosters counterpart Ricky Stewart in criticising a proposed Australian 13 match against Papua New Guinea next month. That's in contrast to one of his star players who said he'd love to put on the green and gold. Ty Neve has more. And once again, we apologise for those technical issues that we are having. Let's uh, try and see if we can move on with our cricket. It's a big night, of course, at Old Trafford, the third Ashes test. And Glenn McGrath has astounded everyone with a miraculous recovery from ankle injury that kept him out of that second test. The Aussie paceman opened the bowling on day one. He had a lot of vigour and energy, and he shared the new ball with Brett Lee, who also made a gritty comeback from a knee infection. Shaken after their first test loss, the Aussies needed a hero, and the cavalry arrived just in time. Glenn McGrath making a remarkable return, and with England deciding to bat, his ankle was put straight to the test. His first over, a clinic. While Lee was making life tough for his partner. Oh. Strauss waltzing back to the speed. dressing rooms in Lee's yeah. next over. Brilliant. Bolstered by a pair of miraculous Brilliant. comebacks, the tourists were soon dealt a batting blow, with Michael Sackin and good for England. Gilchrist again McGrath down after lunch. And dropped again! The umpire doing his part, the very next ball. Out! Whoa! No ball! Budlock! Oh, Budlock, you Aussies! Can you believe it? A horror morning for Glenn McGrath and Adam Gilchrist. England starting to get on top on the first day. Now let's try our luck and return to that Bulldog story. And Bulldogs coach Steve Folkes has joined Roosters counterpart Ricky Stewart in criticising a proposed Australian 13 match against PNG next month. That's in contrast to one of his star players who said he'd love to pull on the green and gold. Let's join Ty Neve. Lee, the ARL is proposing a Tri-Nations warm-up game against the Papua New Guinea side on September 18. The team would basically be made up of all the players who are not featuring in the NRL finals. But Bulldogs coach Steve Folkes reckons it would be better to monitor the players' fitness on the training paddock, claiming a one-off game would do absolutely nothing for them. I'm on record as uh, saying there's, there's way too much football now, so uh, I, you know, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be pro it, no. But if the game goes ahead and the Bulldogs do miss the eight, then there's a good chance Origin 5-8 Braithanaster would be picked, but it doesn't bother him in the slightest. 
I'd be happy to play for Australia no matter what, you know. Like, um, I don't, I don't, for me, it, it might be different for the guys that play, you know, regularly for Australia, but for the guys that don't, I, I'll, I'll be, you know, very proud to put on the jersey no, no matter when it is. Unknown Premier League player Luke Young replaces suspended winger Matt Utai, but will be played at fullback against the second placed Eels tomorrow night. The team had a few days off this week to refresh themselves after successive losses to the league's worst placed teams, Souths and Newcastle. Now the Premiers have got everything to lose at the start of the year and, and we've been through that and now uh, we're pretty much a team with nothing to lose so we'll certainly be playing with a with a different attitude and um, I think we play better in that more relaxed uh, uh, frame of mind. Brisbane back Brent Tate remains in doubt ahead of their clash with the new Premiership favourites the Dragons on Sunday. He'll undergo a fitness test tomorrow on his injured ankle. The Broncos late season form has been cause for concern in recent years but the league leaders aren't worried about losing two of their last three games. 15 points or something so you know, it's not too much for us to get down on. You know, football's a funny game. You can win next week, and you know everyone forgets about the losses. So, you know, we're all positive in the post. After eight years in the competition, Melbourne Storm notch up their 100th home game on Saturday against the New Zealand Warriors. Storm CEO Brian Waldron believes it's simply more ammunition against ongoing criticism from Parramatta boss Dennis Fitzgerald, who believes the Melbourne team has been a failed experiment. Whatever Dennis says he's entitled to, but the reality is what he says actually isn't important. What's important is that the people who make the decisions make the right decisions. Meanwhile, in the nation's capital, Raiders captain Simon Wolford and prop Michael Wayman visited the Australian War Memorial today, ahead of this weekend's salute to the veterans, which is the 60th anniversary of victory in the Pacific and the end of World War II. The team drawing inspiration for what will be a must-win game against South Sydney. Our team is in the wars at the moment, certainly on a much smaller scale than the war we're commemorating today, but no, we've had a rough rough trot. I think this week we've got 20 guys to choose from in the whole squad, so that makes it tough, but uh, the team we put out on Saturday night is certainly going to be a team that can do the job. And Lee, a year of absolute frustration has ended in the worst possible way for Raiders outside back Craig Frawley. He'll undergo season-ending surgery on his ankle after just seven games with the club. Thanks, Ty. When we come back on Sports Tonight, hopefully the technical gremlins will be gone. We'll talk AFL, we'll talk Wallabies. Can our boys belt the All Blacks? Game one of the Bledisloe Cup is upon us. So too is the pressure. The, the All Blacks are first class side there. They're not rated number one for, no, uh, for nothing. The final major of the year, there are no shortcuts. Yeah, that's OK. It's a three-shot hole. I don't think that's too long. And the Eels meet a Tassie Devil. We're hope, hoping we can have a nice easy run to the finish. The snow show continues here in the mountains with a further 15 to 20 centimetres of fresh snow falling across the resorts in the past 24 hours. It is bitterly cold with the temperature sitting at minus 9 degrees up top and with moderate to strong winds blowing in the wind drifts, deep fresh tracks are available every single run. Here in Threadbow, 13 lifts are expected for the weekend with unlimited options for a powder play. It really is hard to find a favourite, but some of the standouts include Bush Ranger, True Blue and Little Beauty, and the Super Trail and Cruiser are silky smooth. Perisher Blue has 45 lifts with the screw at Guthinger providing the powder platform, and 8 lifts are running at Selwyn Snowfields. Over to Victoria, where up to 10 centimetres of fresh snow top things up overnight. In Falls Creek, the natural snow depth has shot up to 114 centimetres. Towers, the locals' choice for intermediates. In Mount Hot, the Mary Slide is the go for some steep, deep turning action. 12 lifts there, and 21 lifts are running at Mount Buller, with men's downhill the windblown favourite. Now these snowfalls are set to continue tomorrow with fine weather for the weekend and with sun and great snow in the mix, we're in for an absolute ripper. This is Scott McKinnon in Threadbow for Sports Tonight. Wallaby Drew Mitchell makes his run on debut against the All Blacks in Saturday night's Bledisloe Cup test in Sydney. Tonight, Trent Higgs caught up with him for a chat about his preparation. There's always plenty of excitement in the build-up to any Bledisloe Cup test and this week is no different but it's an, also an extra special week for you Drew Mitchell. You're 21 years of age, you're making your Wallaby debut in front of a packed house in Sydney. That's most 21 year olds fairy tale. Yeah, it's, uh, it 
It is. It's definitely a dream come true, and uh, hopefully things go pretty well for us on Saturday night. I guess it probably still hasn't sunk in just yet that I'll be running out there and, and starting the game for, for the Wallabies. But uh, I guess come whistle time, it'll, it'll hit me pretty hard. Looking back two months ago, if someone had said to you you'd be the starting fullback for the Bledisloe Cup Test in Sydney, you probably would have laughed at them. Yeah, I probably would have. Uh, you know, both Matt Rogers and Chris Latham were very quality players, and you know it's unfortunate we've both uh, both got injuries and at, at the same time but uh, you know they'll be back and, and they'll, be, they'll be playing pretty well soon. Are those two players that you might talk to in the lead up to the game and maybe get some advice or is there someone else that you're going to get some advice off this week? Uh, definitely I'll, I'll, I'll go looking for Chris uh, in camp in the next couple of days just to just to speak to me about my roles and, and things like that on the field and then also uh, just about the occasion of a Bledisloe Cup. With the Reds, the Queensland Reds, you play most of your time on the wing. Now does that give you an advantage that the All Blacks haven't, you, haven't seen you play at fullback much? Um, I guess it, it it does in a way, uh, you know, there's a lot of analysing and things like that going on these days and, you know, I guess their limited opportunity to see me at fullback is, is probably going to be an advantage to me. It's a pretty daunting prospect, the All Blacks first up in your first run on test. Yeah, it is, yeah, they're a quality side and, and both Australia and New Zealand both get themselves right up for the game in a Bledisloe like Cup, so, you know, it's going to be very physical and very fast, but we, I'm looking forward to getting out there. We'll have a great time on Saturday night and let's hope the Volleys get up. Thanks very much. Let's get back to AFL and as I mentioned earlier, Port Adelaide has failed in its bid to have forward Byron Pickett's two-game suspension for rough conduct overturn. It's been a very interesting night at the appeals board. Let's see if we can check in with Ian Cohen who was there. Yes, good evening Lee and there was a bit of show business about tonight's appeal with the Norm Smith medalist being defended by one of South Australia's top criminal lawyers, Mark Griffin. Now Mark Griffin normally has to work with killers and defend them like he did with the Snowtown body in the barrel case a couple of years ago. But tonight not even the big gun could work his magic. Griffin arrived with Peter Road and argued that contact was inevitable, that the tribunal had not been directed properly and that there were errors in law on Tuesday night. But it came to naught and the two-week stands. The power left wondering about Pickett's future in the game. Byron plays in a fashion that uh, he's not well suited to the current environment. Now, whether Byron can change the way he plays or whether that environment change again, who knows. And also, as we revealed exclusively last night, Roger James won't be required at Alberton next year. Port confirming he won't be offered another contract because of his troublesome knee. All the evidence we have is that uh, we can't expect to get a lot better and it's probably only going to get worse you know, in, in, uh, in the years ahead. So, uh, you know, the decision's been made to, to, to move forward and, you know, Roger's, uh, you know, whilst he's disappointed, he's very accepting of that. So Port Adelaide certainly with plenty of angst at the moment. OK, now on to the teams and we start with the Derby tomorrow night at Subiaco. And the latter leaders have two changes, Deng line back while McDougall has been dumped. The Eagles quick to jump on the front foot and deny they are in a form slump after two losses in three weeks. I don't think we're in a flat period. I think uh, one of the good things about our side this year is that we've maintained uh, a consistent level throughout the course of the year and I don't think our guys are about to let that slip. The Dockers have lost Headland, Roger Hayden back in. Frio on a roll and out to break club history with six consecutive wins. The ramifications of the four points are more significant to us. But John's done a great job with West Coast taking them into a, a position where they can win a premiership. Now to Saturday and it might be heritage round but boy are there some cracking games on the line. The Roos meet the Saints at the Dome. They regain their skipper from his rib problem. Perkins also in. While St Kilda have only the one change, Big Kane Acklin in for the injured defender. The Cats are hosting the Dees. Cameron Mooney returns and right out with that shoulder. The Demons with four gun ins. Have a look at those names there, including the skipper over his knee injury. The Magpies have a priority pick battle with the Blues. Two changes for the Woods in what will be the 200th game for both Scott Burns and Shane Wakelander. While Carlton have no changes to their lineup for that game. To the showdown and no changes for the Adelaide Crows. But for Port Adelaide, obviously Byron Pickett will not be playing and they have till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning to decide his replacement could come from the ranks of the emergency Salopec, Chaplin or maybe Cochrane. And at Telstra Stadium, the Swans are hosting the Lions. They've got three into their squad of 25. While Brisbane have included Copeland and White, Jonathan Brown isn't ready to return from his chronic groin injury. The medicos were pretty keen for me to have a fortnight off, so this is the second week of that. After a week, I've, start, I've started to feel all right and uh, started pushing the uh, pushing me case a bit. Hawthorne meets Essendon at the G. Brown returns along with three others, and hot on the heels of Nick Holland's retirement, Alistair Clarkson has refused to guarantee injury-plagued forward John Barker's future. He needs to put in a solid three to four month block between now and Christmas to convince us that uh, that he could uh, make a good contribution for us next year.
The Bombers have been forced to cover some big name injuries and a suspension, some young blood in there. And finally, the Tigers clash with the Dogs. Again, injuries playing a role at the selection table, some old heads back in, while the hard running Bullies have added three to their squad of 25. So, Lee, there's all the teams. And before I go, repeating the news that Byron Pickett's appeal has been dismissed and his penalty of two weeks stands, so he's going to miss Showdown 18 this weekend. Good stuff, thanks, Ian. Ian Cohen there. Reigning V8 supercar champion Marcus Ambrose has admitted the pressure of winning three straight series crowns got to him earlier this season. He today visited NRL club Parramatta while in Sydney for this weekend's round of the championship. Marcus Ambrose went to extraordinary heights to beat the traffic today as he touched down for a promotional visit with the Parramatta Eels. But being a back-to-back -back series champion isn't all glamour. It also brings added pressure and the expectation to win another series title affected Ambrose this year. Yeah, early on in the season I was probably trying a little bit too hard um, and that showed on and off the racetrack. So, uh, you know, we've, we've gotten over that and uh, we've managed to maintain our, our points advantage. And uh, we're looking forward to the second half of the year being a nice solid run and, and hopefully um, an easier run than the last couple of seasons. Even though Ambrose hasn't dominated this season like last, he leads the most competitive championship race in years and he believes Stone Brothers are still the best team. He has this message to any critics. They can say whatever they like. At the moment we're 100 odd points in front in the championship and we've had five podiums out of seven races and a round win, so, you know, the year's gone pretty good. The Ford Ace is headed to the United States next year for a shot at NASCAR. He's still yet to finalise a deal, but an announcement isn't far off. Oh, I'd say weeks, not months, yeah, um, you know, but there's a lot to be done before, uh, you know, before I finish this year's championship, and so I'm really just concentrating on that. And, and if I don't have a deal by Christmas, I'll still be moving over. Meanwhile, Holden driver Cameron McConville and his teammate Andrew Jones face a huge mountain before they get to Bathurst this year. They'll cycle from Melbourne to Mount Panorama for charity in September. It is a little daunting, um, but I think that was what we wanted to do. We wanted something to be not easy so that it is a challenge and a, and a physical challenge. Australia has had a great day at the World Athletics Championships in Helsinki with Patrick Johnson and John Stephenson both winning through to their respective finals. Johnson qualified seventh fastest in the 200 metres. He broke a 12-year finals drought for Australia in the event. Well, no, it's just good to get in the final and see what I can do. So, like everything, step by step. So this is a good stepping stone for next year and beyond. Stephenson tapped his heart before setting off in the 400 metres. The Olympic relay silver medalist made it to the decider as the eighth fastest qualifier. Australia's latest butterfly sensation, Jessica Shipper, has smashed Patria Thomas's Commonwealth record in the 100 metres fly on the final night of the National Short Course Championships in Melbourne. Shipper set a new time of 56.56 seconds, just 0.22 of a second outside the world record. In other results, Liesl Jones again had the measure of Brooke Hansen in the 200 metres breaststroke. Libby Lenton took out the 50 metres freestyle, while Eamon Sullivan and Ashley Callis dead heated in the men's 100 metres free. and 51 players will tee it up in tomorrow's PGA Championship, the final golf major of the year. Defending champion Vijay Singh is chasing his third PGA and the 17th is looming as one of the biggest challenges for the field. It's the longest hole in championship history. All they've done with 17 is take hitting the green in two out of play, I think. I mean, um, maybe someone will. If anyone can do it, it'll be Tiger Woods. The world number one is favourite to finish on a high by claiming his third major of the year, a feat he achieved back in 2000. Well, his dad was a legend of the game, but Eric Groth Jr. is his own man. And as Sports Tonight's Lee Furlong continues her search for the NRL's sexiest man, she found out that Groth can do more than just play footy. The sexiest man in league, presented by Adidas Active Skin Care and the Sunday Telegraph. Parramatta Eels winger Eric Groth is one man that will have absolutely no difficulty finding a new career once his football days are over. His brilliant talent is displayed each week on the football field, but we discovered his talents lay in a number of other areas. He's the latest candidate for the sexiest man of league and is quite in tune with another dimension of life. 
Eric, you're a man of many talents. You play some amazing football. You can play the guitar, write your own music and sing. Is there anything that you can't do? Lots of things I can't do. Um, not really good at cooking, can't dance real well. Um, yeah, a few other things. When did you discover you had a talent for music? Uh, well, I've kind of always been around it growing up. Like my dad played in a band and stuff, so there was guitars lying around and I just used to pick them up and muck around. And he showed me a few chords and just kept, I loved it, so I practice every day. And, yeah. So would he be your musical influence? Yeah, you could say that, yeah. Him and um, all the music he used to listen to, a lot of like Led Zeppelin and stuff like that, so it was good growing up around that. You're in the best form this season playing for the Eels. You must be happy with how you've been going. Yeah, the last four weeks I haven't really played that well, but um, yeah, on a whole, yeah, the year's been good compared to other years I've had, that's for sure. More and more men these days are starting to use skincare products to enhance their appearance. Do footballers fit into this category? Um, I know a few guys that use, yeah, a few of the guys get dry skin after run around all day and they use moisturiser and stuff, yeah. Nathan Highmarsh uses, um, if he gets pimples and then he puts that on, is it foundation? Yeah, he puts that on, so yeah. on those, yeah. So if you think Eric Groth can sing his way into your heart and be crowned the sexiest man in Lee, to the Sunday Telegraph for voting details or visit www.sexiestmaninlee.com.au. The search continues. Now, if you feel like a flutter on sport this weekend, here's Glenn Muncy from TAB Sportsbet with all the latest odds. Round 23 of the National Rugby League starts on Friday night at Parramatta when Parramatta hosts the Bulldogs. The bigger punters have straight into Parramatta quite keen for them to keep the Bulldogs' woes going after having been beaten at their last two starts. On Saturday, the punters will decide who starts favourite here between the Roosters, who look like missing the semis for the first time since 96, and the up-and-down Cronulla. On Sunday, some ripper matches here at Campbelltown. We've got the West Tigers looking for seven in a row against the Cowboys, and it's number one in the Premiership betting the Dragons, travelling to Brisbane to meet number one in the competition table, and already the punters believe that the Dragons will upset the Broncos here. The last match, Newcastle and Manly, bottom of the table, Newcastle favourite and Manly beat the Broncos last week but they haven't won in Newcastle for eight years. AFL round 20 is heritage round. Friday night football in the West. The West Coast host Fremantle. They've split the last six times they've met them there. On Saturday new Premiership favourites St Kilda play the Kangaroos. They've won their last three, three of their last four against the Kangaroos and then on Sunday afternoon not at the SCG, we're at Telstra Stadium again for Sydney versus Brisbane. Of course Sydney too good in the early round this year. Well too good but only by by six. Uh, uh, Rugby Union is at Telstra again on Saturday night. It's the Bledisloe Cup match, third match of the Tri-Nation Series. The All Blacks favourite there over the Wallabies. And the soccer fans, English Premier League is back. Saturday night, match one is Everton at home to Man United. Man United already well back there. Other matches we'll look at, Middlesbrough at home to Liverpool. And then on Sunday night, Arsenal host Newcastle with Arsenal short price favourite. TABsportsbet.com.au is where we are on the net. One double three three nine zero on the phone in all your TA agencies right around Australia. And that's it for another Sports Tonight. Our apologies for those technical problems we had a little earlier. Before we go, a quick update for the third Ashes test. Shane Warne has just claimed his 600th career wicket and he got Marcus Trescothic. They're now two for 165. I'm Lee Diffie. For those of you heading out to the V8s at Oran Park this weekend, I'll see you there. Good night. This program brought to you by Local Liquor. Local Liquor, there's one near you. Shoot down to the local. program proudly brought to you by a little bit of relief for arthritic pain and muscular aches and pains.
The following program is classified MA15+. It may contain very coarse language, sexual references, drug references, adult themes and nudity. Channel 10 advises that it's not suitable for people under 15.